Hi, in this uh, video, we're going to talk about a few things to do with uh, chords on the guitar in terms of chord structure, for want of a better term, and also um, a little bit about playing some blues rhythm. So, first of all, <laughs> and you can probably hear in the background one of our Christmas uh, reindeer is, <laughs> is singing along, but he'll stop in just a moment. Anyway, just to check on some terminology, um, the first string on the guitar is the thinnest string, so this one. Uh, so the strings are numbered from one to six, that being the sixth string. The frets are numbered from number one here. So it's actually the spaces between the frets because uh, the frets really, I guess, are the pieces of metal that are hammered into the neck. But anyway, first fret all the way up the neck. Uh, your 12th fret is the one that on most guitars has some kind of special marking. On mine, it's two dots. On some, it may be a diamond or, or whatever. And on my guitar, I also have those markings along the side of the guitar though on the side of the uh, neck, but unfortunately on mine it doesn't have a double dot for the 12th fret on the side, but anyway, be that as it may. Also, when we talk about uh, playing chords and how to uh, finger them, on your hand, and I'm right-handed, so I'm fingering the chords with my left hand, first finger, second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. Okay, and I mention these things because um, it's important. It can it can save some time if we at least know we're talking the same language. <clears throat> okay, so music, no matter whether you're playing it on a guitar or some other chording instrument, anyway, um, is quite uh, mathematical. It's it's quite. Uh, predictable in a sense when you understand the systems behind it. I've always said to guitar students over the years, uh, I can't take away the magic of how people play. Each person is going to play slightly differently. They're going to put something of themselves into uh, everything they do. But my aim is always to take away the mystery because a lot of people learning guitar have spent too much time on trying to figure things out that if they understood the system behind it uh, could have saved a lot of t could have saved a lot of time so <clears throat> um, if you're able to you can google Nashville chord chart and you should find um, some diagrams on there that help you with uh, that sort of common language among musicians in terms of numbering chords uh, this is helpful because we may th decide to play a song in a particular key, but if we find it doesn't suit our voice, or whoever's singing it, we may need to change key. Now also, when we talk key, and I don't want to get super technical because that's not helpful to me <laughs> or anyone else. <coughs> Excuse me. Key generally means the note and in our case the chord that a song ends on. It may mean it's the same note or it's the note or chord that it begins on but that's not always the case. So if we think is key as meaning where the song or the melody of that song keeps coming back to. Okay so it keeps returning to uh, if we're in the key of G, that would mean that song keeps coming back to generally finishing each verse on a G, okay? And the song generally will finish on a, on a G too. So then if we found we were playing a song using chords in the key of G, and that didn't work, we might want to try, say, the key of D, um, where the song is going to keep coming back to a D chord. <coughs> Excuse me. Musicians will sometimes refer to certain types of songs as being one, four, five songs. And what that means is they are three chord songs that use the chords number one, four, and five in them. 
This applies to many blues songs, a lot of country songs too, and a lot of older rock and roll songs. So songs like Johnny Be Good, um, many of the 50s kind of rock and roll songs were basically three chord songs. And the three chords that were used were the numbers one, four, and five in whatever key they were played in. So for example, if you wanted to use, if you wanted to try singing Rock Around the Clock in the key of E, you would use the chords E, A, and B. And with B, often it works well to substitute B7 because it's a little easier to play. Talking of easier to play, learning guitar back in the 60s, many people in my generation, and certainly including me, got a great uh, deal of tips and help from a terrific book which is still available to this day by British guitarist Bert Whedon and it was called Play in a Day <laughs> which was clearly a lie but nonetheless his approach was to at least get you playing so the book actually showed how to substitute easier chords for more complicated ones without you know dramatically affecting the song and so forth and it's an approach that, that's been very, very successful. People like me, but also well-known people like Eric Clapton and others, got their start from that very book, Burt Whedon's Play in a Day. And as I say, I, I did just check recently, and it's still available over the internet. And it's a terrific book. I think he did produce a further book called Play Every Day. <laughs> And Barrett Whedon was a very accomplished guitar player, in actual fact, um, and uh, much respected, uh, certainly in the UK. Uh, died several years ago, but uh, still one of those uh, uh, magic guitar players. Anyway, there we go. Anyway, that's that. So just back to some basics here, okay? So if we were going to strum along to a rock and roll song from the 50s, for example, if it was in the key of G, we'd be using a G chord. We'd also need a C, and we'd need a D. <clears throat> if we were playing in the key of A, we would need A. We would need D, and we would need E. Hanging on to that thought with key of A for a moment, I want to move on to playing some blues rhythm in the key of A. And what I'm going to show you is not strumming chords, though you could certainly have someone strumming chords along with you. Uh, this is playing a little bit of a, a blues rhythm. So, in the key of A, and I'm going to show you how this is in just a moment, but I'm going to demonstrate first of all. same little uh, riff, if you like, can be used in rock and roll. In fact, early rock and roll was really a cross between blues and country. The rhythm side of things tended very much to come from the blues, but with a different beat. So here it's that same little riff, but played with a rock beat. I'll start that again. Which is a bit more interesting than just strumming the chords. And so 
so forth. So how do we do this? Well, here it is. Now, <clears throat> having sausage fingers, I hope I'm not going to uh, make this too difficult to see. Um, if we're playing in the key of A, we're going to use pairs of strings, and we're going to use the fifth string, which is your A string, and the fourth string, which is your D string. And we're going to put our first finger, so that's this one, on the second fret of the fourth string. But we're going to play the fifth and the fourth strings together. We're going to do two on the second fret there. Then we're going to use our third finger on the fourth fret. So just see if you can try that. Just do it over and over. So there's that little blues riff. It's a sort of a walk-in bass, okay, or a, a boogie. Um, when it comes time to change to the D chord, we then move to the fourth and third strings. Same thing again, though, okay? Second fret and fourth fret. Now I'm just going to keep repeating that. There it is on the D. In this particular um, 12 bar that I was doing, we're going to go four bars. Is that four? I'm not sure. <laughs> four bars of A. Or we'll do it. We'll start off with four bars of A. Then we're going to go to D. For two bars. Back to A. For four, sorry, for two bars. Now we're going to go to E. Oh, better stop there. Here's how you do E. We're going to use sixth string and fifth string. And what we're going to do there is we'll do one bar on E, in the E position, and then we'll Go down to the D position for a bar and then back to the A. Let's see if that works. Eh? Back to A and finish with a little flourish on the E position. Okay, I should just stop. I tuned my guitar before I started, but with temperature changes and anything else, and depending what kind of a tuner you're using, uh, we should actually just make sure that we're at the same pitch. Um, I'm old enough to remember when there were no such things as electronic tuners. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes a lot of earlier recordings, like the 50s and 60s recordings, you're going to find um, they're not necessarily in what we call concert pitch or um, at concert pitch or concert tuning because, in fact, they were tuning up together Often they would tune with a piano, but if there was no piano there, then they would tune with each other in the band. And uh, provided they were each in tune with each other, it, it didn't matter. It still doesn't nowadays. I mean, there's not always, there's going to be situations, maybe you're sitting around a campfire in the dark, <clears throat> and you wouldn't even be able to see an electronic tuner or read an electronic tuner. If there's two of you playing, provided you're in sync with each other, it really does not matter if you're not in what's called uh, concert uh, tuning. Okay, so I'm going to strum a few chords just to get give you a chance to make sure your tuning is approximately the same as mine. Here's the A chord. I'll play a G. Oh, and our cat was just putting in his two cents worth. Here's an E. And here's a D. I'll do the strings individually. And I'm just going to check with the tuner on my guitar because I tuned the guitar about 10 minutes ago. And as I say, with changing temperatures, things can change a little bit.
that's still pretty good. So that's my first string, E. So provided we're roughly in the same position, you should be able to uh, uh, strum along with this if you wish to, okay, if you wish to. So let's get back to where we were. So I'm going to play these, this little blues riff in the key of A. What I'll do is I'll call out the chords to strum along with it if you like. Or if you wish to try playing that blues riff as well, uh, by all means do. And just a reminder, we're going to start off using the fifth string and fourth string with our, finger, our first finger on the second fret of the fourth string. And then we're going to need to use our third finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string as well. Okay? When it comes time for the D, I will, we will change to the fourth string and the third string. Same thing. And when it comes time for the E, we go to the sixth string and fifth string. So here we go. Two, three, four. So we're carrying along on the A for four bars. Here we go to the D for two bars. Back to A. E. And down to D. And back to A. And finish with a flourish on the E. I'll do it again. A. Okay, so that's uh, how you play a blues in the key of A. It's one uh, version, if you like. We can also uh, we can also use this where we start off on the A, but just do the A for the one for one bar, then a bar of D, and back to A for two bars, like this: two, three, four. Back to A. And then the rest of the song would be, be the same. Um, so this is important to get the hang of playing blues in the key of A. A is a really nice key to start off with, and, and it's very popular in terms of playing blues because you're using open strings. When we get into some other keys, that's not necessarily as easy. Okay, so A is a great one to start off in, and it's going to you know, be really great in many, many songs that you can come up with. Let's do the same thing now in the key of A, but with a rock beat, okay? And I'll demonstrate what I, what I mean. And I'm going to use that one bar of A, one bar of D, and back to A again. Two, three, four. idea of key that was in the key of A, it ended on an A. Okay. 
um, as I say, with music, we can we can overburden ourselves with with too much technicality. Basically, as I say, the the definition of key for me is what does the song end on, or what does each verse end on. Um, some people think yes, but what does it begin on? That can be a bit misleading because there are plenty of songs that actually don't begin on the uh, root chord, as it were, or the the chord for that key, the main number one chord for that key, the number one, and again. These three chord songs are using the chords number one, four, and five. We use Roman numerals for all, and that's been a tradition over the years, and yeah, I still do it. Um, what I like to do is a chart that shows the main chords in each key. That will include some minors. See, if we start off in the key of uh, C, for example, and we, we start with C, because the key of C, if we want to get some, you know, into musical notation, so all the technicalities, if you think of a piano keyboard, the white keys are natural notes, okay? The key of C, if you play a scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, in the key of C, uh, you will only need the white notes, okay? As we go through other keys, they need more of the black notes, the sharps and flats, okay? So the main chords in C... The number one chord is C. The number two chord is D minor. The number three chord is E minor. Then we get to the number four chord, which is F, and I'm gonna do it as a five string chord. The number five chord is G. The number six chord is A minor. And the number seven chord, I have down, I would have down as G7. You could also use a B diminished. And then back to C. Okay. Um, but, you know, that's, again, that may be getting more technical than what we need right now. The majority of popular songs do not use a whole bunch of chords. Even if you analyze classical music surprisingly enough although the arrangements may be complicated because classical music tends to inv involve a wide uh, range of instruments a wide array the actual chord structure behind uh, popular classical music anyway is not that hard and that's that's why there's a close relationship between much pop music and uh, classical music sometimes um, and here's the thing as human beings, we tend to remember things that are easy to remember. So we can probably sing along the part or sing part of, a, of songs that we know and like. And, you know, there may be the odd classical tune that you can hum. Um, the reason for that is that they are, they are um, melodies that have a, a pretty simple structure to them, a pretty simple chord structure to them, if you like. One of the things that makes it difficult for us listening to music from other parts of the world, and by that I mean countries like India, or probably certain parts of Africa, Chinese music and so forth, is that they don't, their music doesn't conform to the same set of expectations. I, I don't like the term rules so much, but expectations that Western music has. So let's face it, much music in the Western world has been influenced by music from the British Isles, if you like, um, English, Scottish, Irish music from years and years and years and years ago, brought over to the New World, um, and then mixed in with music that came from the slaves from Africa. Uh, that's where we get our bendy notes from, that's where we get our roots of blues from. But again, um, you put those together and you put it in a structure and that's not always the case in music either. You can listen to some really terrific music that's of the Western world, if you like, um, which, you know, ne it doesn't necessarily uh, conform to uh, um, uh, a bar structure in terms of people uh, only doing a certain number of beats per bar and so forth. If you, in the blues world, if you ever listen to John Lee Hooker, uh, anybody playing in John Lee Hooker's band would have to be pretty good at uh, figuring out when he was going to change chords next. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, anyway, same with some other players. Um, 
we had the pleasure of seeing David Honeyboy Edwards a few years go down in Texas, and uh, he had a uh, an accomplice with him, and uh, I thought, yeah, uh, okay, you've got to be right on the ball, because his changes were not actually predictable. They were not actually predictable. But most of what we listen to and most of what we remember is predictable, or at least follows a, a format, if you like, okay? So anyway, here we go. We'll do one more round of the uh, little guitar rhythm thingy in the key of A. And I'll do it to the rock beat this time. So again, here's your A chord. Just check your guitar, see if you're, you know, pretty closely in tune there. And after four, we'll, we'll do this. Okay, so you can either try to uh, go along playing the same rhythm uh, pattern, uh, if you like, or you can strum chords along with it, and then we're playing a, a duet. <laughs> okay, two, three, four. There's that D coming in, back to the A. Back to A. Here's E, D, A. There's E. Okay, hope this was of some use. Bye for now.